Welcome to Hanging with the Hazemans. I'm Jess. And I'm Alexander. And each week you can tune in to truly hang out with us. We're ditching the perfectly curated content and giving you the raw, real life conversations about the fun stuff, the hard stuff, and everything in between. With that being said, let's hang. All right. The question that we keep getting <laughs> is from, from who? From everybody. Fair. When is baby number two? Are we going to have another baby? That, do we want another baby? Are we? Do we want to expand our family? How do you? Why feel? do they ask? Oh, there's more questions. I feel like that was five <laughs> questions. That was a lot of questions. But I feel like, how do you feel about that question in general? Um, I mean, I'm having a wonderful time with Adeline right now. Things, it's not like. It's it's phenomenal. You don't feel like you're missing something. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a great spot with Adeline. Like I'm not stressing about her eating, her eczema, her sleep. Like I don't have a lot to worry about. Mm -hmm. And not to say we're just like cruising through, but like we go hang out, we go to the park, we go to the museum where I'd say we're on easy street at the moment. Interesting. So thinking back to like before you were a dad, because you were really nervous to even start having kids and then like obviously like newborn stage like did did you imagine yourself being so comfortable having a kid i knew at some point it was just gonna be like hey i'm just playing with my daughter the whole day and like we'll throw in some fun stuff as far as like learning wise because i like to do that anyways because that's generally how i've always been with kids like i did babysitting and stuff like that and the ones i struggled with was the ones I couldn't communicate with super well or I had to change their diapers because <laughs> there became something of like, a, oh, what if it doesn't go very well? Or like I'm holding the leg too hard or like I got to make sure I wipe it 100% because who wants to w walk around with a little bit of brown <laughs> in their shorts? You're still like that. He yeah. is like, since Adeline was born, he is the type of dad that will change her diaper immediately. Like he'll see that there's pee. I get the poop. Like if you notice your kid has poop, change the diaper right away. But like as soon as she pees, she could be like still peeing and he's like getting the diaper ready, ready to change it. I'm not going to say I pee my pants a lot <laughs> or have peed my pants. But sometimes while working out, I'm sweating a lot. And it's extremely uncomfortable to have moisture down there. And but you it, aren't wearing a diaper. So from somebody who has personally worn a diaper and a lot of fluids leak out of me. I've worn a diaper before. Yeah, but. Did, I was 20. And remember, like, <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> Jeez Louise. But don't like it sucks the moisture away. It's not as uncomfortable as soiling your pants. When was the last time you used the word soiling? <laughs> That's incredible. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about it. I, I I feel like it's uncomfortable, but at some point, like that's the point of the diaper and we don't need to be going through five every hour. So I can see your point. Right. Um, okay. So the whole point of that was like, I agree. I still feel very comfortable with Adeline too. And I like where we're at and I like the amount of tension amount of attention I can give her and I feel like we're good we're, we're good at parenting right now like I feel like we've got it under control Well, like if there's a stressful situation that you're having with her instead of like having to fight through it you just say Alexander Alexander and like I, I get I, I get the the subtle hint oh, yeah. every once in a while but we're available to help each other out it's not like one super busy doing something else unless you're working and like generally I don't need to come to you for help for any of this stuff because you put her to sleep and that's the only thing I can't do right now. And, and feed her. And I thought that was like one and the same. I guess you guys aren't in. <laughs> oh yeah. Of... Sleep, breastfeeding, same. Well, same putting thing. her to sleep, that's when you feed her. So, so when people <laughs> ask you like, if you want a second, how do you, like, what's your initial response? So similar to a dog, weird, um, I like things to be set up as far as like routines and things I know that I'm going to do and things I know that you're going to do. 
So there's not a whole bunch of questions and it's just like, all right, this is great. Same like with investing. It's nice to do it slow. Make sure you're in a good place. You have X amount of money, six months in advance um, of expenses. Like I like to play it safe. Yeah. Um, and I, we've probably told the story about Bali, but I didn't think we were going to have to get a dog because our landlord said no dog, absolutely no dogs at the beginning. So when you talk to me about it, I was like, sure, whatever. He's going to say no. Three days later, he said, yes, we were in Ohio picking out a dog. So like for me, <laughs> the same thing happened with a baby. Like same thing we happened were like, with a baby. Oh, we'll stop trying. We'll, yeah. we'll stop preventing. Cause the we landlord were- said no babies. <laughs> and <laughs> we thought that it would take a, well, we didn't know. Right. Like you hear so many stories about infidelity and like all of these things. I do. Uh, infertility. Infidelity is oh. cheating. <laughs> Oops. I was trying to get lots of people hey. pregnant and it just. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, infertility, you know, I'm tired. Watching, too, ma- watching too many suits. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Anyways, um, you hear stories about it taking a long time or it not being possible and all of these things going on. And then I'm also on the t- side of like information where like we are just surrounded by like toxic chemicals and toxic foods and like all of these things. And I've been learning so much about all of this bad stuff in the world and how it affects our bodies. And I started panicking and I was like, it could take us years. So we had a long conversation because we were like, well, we're really not ready for kids. Like we're not like yes, let's start a family today, like actively trying, but we're like, we should probably stop preventing so that like, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. And it happened first time go around. (laughs) Well, so I, am pretty sure I remember the time because we were fighting about something at that point. And then we had sex, um, fight magically stopped surprise. Um, but we were talking about insurance because my insurance was coming to an end. So we were either going to get pregnant in like the next two to three months or we were going to have to wait a while because money wise you were doing the full-time influencing. Like you were just transferring over to that. I might be a little, a little earlier, a little late, but money was going to be an issue, which technically shouldn't be when talking about having a baby, but that's just the world we're in at the moment. Right. So, um, how do you feel about baby number two now? Like, Oh, I feel like I'm in a phenomenal place more prepared for if we were to have a second child and i see i when people keep asking me this question i have like a really like for so long i wanted to be a mom and i thought that how how do you feel about people asking you about baby number two (laughs) For so long, I wanted to be a mom and I thought that I would want to be a mom, you know, again and again and again. And I didn't, I never foresaw myself like having one child and being like, wow, this is enough. Like if we were only blessed with one child, I would still be very happy. I thought about that. I was like, this is phenomenal. (laughs) Like this is like fantastic. Happy as can be, cute as can be. Mom deals with the hard stuff, feeding and sleeping, and like <laughs> you get the good gig. Yeah, no, I I thought that I was just gonna want to crank babies out, and for a long time I wanted Irish twins. Like I wanted to have one and then the other, and I was like, oh well, I really want to, you know, focus on Adeline. Like I'm, I am loving every second of getting to see her grow and learn and like just experience life and it's just been such an eye-opening experience to become a mom which is interesting because you like you mentioned I nannied for over 10 years prior to getting pregnant so like I've been around kids I've been around newborns I've been around babies I've been around toddlers I've been through life with kids I wouldn't I nannied a six month till he was eight, seven years old so I like I thought I knew it, but like it was a different experience, like watching my own, you know, flesh and blood, like experience this. It was a crazy. So that stopped me from like being like, okay, let's get pregnant right away. Like I thought that's how I was going to be. And I think with the second or like the thought of a second, I was 
I wanted it and I know I want to be pregnant again and I know that I want to have another baby, but I was just like trying to find the time, which is exactly how I felt the first time around. It was like, I knew I wanted to be a mom, but it was like finding the right time to just like up and change your entire life and like recenter it around another human being is difficult. And like making that second call is the same kind of feeling. Like I was like, I don't know. Like, do I want to do it? Do I want to wait until they're like, there's a five year spread, you know, like some people do that. Some people have like, you know, seven years between their kids and like those kids are great. Like what, there's no right answer, but there's also no wrong answer. And I felt like that's kind of been our philosophy with baby number two is like, if it happens, it happens. And when it happens, it happens. And if it happens, that, that should be a good shirt. If it happens, it happens. <laughs> hashtag pregnant (laughs) if it happens it happens (laughs) um so how have we been preventing because you know the math better than i do and if we're having sex usually i ask you hey when's your period you tell me when your period is going to be i'm like all right well what does that mean for us do i need to pull out or do we need to have a condom on if it's getting close but Every time I ask you, like, I never remember. I just know at some point you're extremely fertile. Ovulating. Ovulating. And that's what, how does, how does that work? You know, I'm not, I'm no expert. I actually had an expert on the podcast and then we talked about this. Um, We should call her back. (laughs) So the thing about, um, so we, I'm not on birth control. So when we're, you what? know, preventing, you know, trying not to have a baby, we have to track my cycle to be able to tell, you know, when I'm ovulating. So to avoid having sex during that time, if we were, um, so the thing about it is you have to be really on top of it and you have to be super exact with this. And when we were like really actively preventing, I used the Ava bracelet and I would wear it because it was like as precise as possible. And it took your temperature at the same time every single day and it tracked your, your, your cycle by your temperature. And what's really cool is like after a few months, it's really, really accurate. So if like you consistently use it every night for months. So is it just temperature and that's how it knows? Yeah. Because when you're ovulating, your temperature drastically changes in the morning. Like up or low? I don't know. Because if it's low, like you must always be ovulating because you're always cold. (laughs) So that's one way, like that's why the way that we would, you know, would try to do it. Um, That being said, like, you know, us (laughs) has not been like 100% accurate. I haven't been using the Ava bracelet. I'm just asking you. I, I, my tracking is. (laughs) Hey, my, my life, your life, we're one and the same. Um, So I don't know, since having Adeline, you know, my period came back and then it like didn't come, like I didn't have it for a couple months and then it came back again. And then it was like, I don't know, I guess now I've had my period for about a year and we've just been kind of using the method of like when I know I'm ovulating and around then we're like really careful not to have sex like anywhere near it. Um, Well, but there was like three months ago, you said you wanted to try, try again. Because I think Adeline was sleeping well and you're like, hey, let's have a baby. And like we tried and then you got your period and I was like, great, we're going to have much more sex. And then you're like, well, maybe I don't want to have another baby. I was like, oh, what happened? That's my life. Like one second, I'm like, (laughs) literally... Like I'll be ovulating. I'm like, yep, let's try. Like I'm ready for another baby. And then the next day I'll be like posting on Instagram. Like I absolutely don't want another baby. Like I'm not ready for a baby yet. And then the next day I'll be like, I'll see the post. And I'm like, Jessica, like what? (laughs) Where is this coming from? Yeah. I'm all over the place. I, I blame that on hormones. Um, and having a toddler who doesn't sleep through the night. Like one good night. Yep. I want another one. One bad night. Nope. I'm totally done. (laughs) But yeah so i feel like that's just kind of been how we went and then we talked about it like a couple months ago and like you said how long have we lived here three months two months we moved in in july july august two months okay yeah why i was just trying to figure out what when that what was that or when we were moving when we tried yeah no it had to have been when we were here oh okay. that first month and then i got my period in montana gotcha and we were like oh bummer 
It was it was a very big letdown because with Adeline it was like the fr- we we were we just weren't like even like really it. trying. We yeah. were like okay, we just stopped preventing and like had sex, and I didn't find out until I was like nine weeks pregnant. So yeah. like we were already further along, and I was like that oblivious to my cycle <laughs> and like what was going yeah. on. Um, I was pretty worried at first because I used to play a lot of video games on my laptop. And they would sit over my nether regions. And I always heard like that was a bad thing for sperm count. Yeah. And I, and like other things like my thyroid was bad growing up and things of that nature. I, I was pretty worried. But then when you got pregnant so early, I was like, we strong. Like it's going ha- <laughs> it to ha- <laughs> it's gonna happen the first time again. And then it oh, didn't. Man. And it didn't. Yeah. And like I, I remember like I got my period. I brought like pregnancy tests and everything to Montana thinking like, okay, like I could probably be pregnant. Or maybe pre- be pregnant, and I remember like getting my period, and it was like a weird, weird feeling. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, like I, I was like obviously, it doesn't happen the first time, and usually yeah. it takes like I want to say this statistic for a pregnancy to stick is like anywhere between like one and six months for like a healthy, you know, like for even for just a normal person, like okay. not experience any type of like hormonal irregularities or i don't know like i just pretty sure for like the average person it still takes a while Mm -hmm. like i'm pretty sure like if you're if you want to get like intervention and like do ivf or anything they make you wait like you have to have at least been trying for x amount of months before they'll even like consider you because they like yeah it 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 can take a while so i mean month number one it didn't stick and we were like uh that's a weird feeling Mm mm-hmm yeah and then then i kind of went back to being like i don't know if i'm ready for kids and then i was like well okay so then you just tell me when to pull out and when not to and i'm gonna listen to you and i thought i was right (laughs) i was wrong 16 minutes in um so people are kind of thinking they know what you're saying but break down the scenario of uh, what you're talking about <laughs> okay so i'm pregnant <laughs> wait um, break it down wait you really just slowly rolled into that yeah so we ended up like you know we like i said we weren't like dra- like drastically preventing by any means yeah. we just kind of were like ah, maybe it's not time to try like let's you know back off for a couple of months or whatever um and so it, i had ovulated it had been like five days past ovulation and we were having sex and i was like we're good like we're way past ovulation there's no way no need to pull there's it, a way. Alexander. <laughs> there's a way so um yeah i mean it was a very happy surprise though so how did you find out because i would be like hey like when's your period and you're like oh it's in like two or three days and then like what was going through was there any time where you thought you were pregnant before you found out like what was no but everybody else did and i was like very (laughs) adamant about telling them they were completely incorrect um like i was complaining that i was tired and everybody on instagram was like oh you're pregnant and i was like no because with adeline i didn't know i was pregnant for the first nine weeks Mm -hmm. like i that looking back i knew i had symptoms later around like seven or eight weeks my boobs started to get really sore yeah but well that was hilarious because like you couldn't run anymore and i was like what's happening happening? yeah Yeah. (laughs) and it was like my boobs were sore because i was pregnant um that's funny but yeah so i like kept saying like saying i was tired i was having like i was waking up in the middle of the night which was weird and i remember talking to your mom about it and i was like yeah but i know i'm not pregnant i just had my period Mm -hmm. but these symptoms started at like two weeks like i was only two weeks pregnant when i was like having these like yeah. pretty severe pregnancy symptoms i did not I, think that they could I be so strong over under yours are you hot no we've reached the limit for how oh. much my knees can handle oh yeah I'm getting old but yeah so um we so what was i saying yeah pull that up sorry what's wrong i knocked it down what happened i you're good now oh yeah yeah technical difficulties um i don't know what we're talking about I forget. uh talking to my mom oh yeah so other people knew that i was pregnant and i was like no there's no way like i just had my period two weeks ago there's no way and like i don't even know it was crazy like i was like it was like right away as soon as this baby conceived i started experiencing symptoms so i'm only currently five weeks oh my goodness babe you're 
going crazy. I am. My knee hurts. Okay, we'll stop the video and I'm good. Get, I'm get good. Adjusted. I'm good. <laughs> How are the hormones? <laughs> we will pause everything and I, you can edit it. I'm great. No, because you're going to be moving around. You're making the mics move. It's going to sound terrible. I haven't moved once during this podcast. <laughs> I'm leaving this in, so we might as well move on. <laughs> Oh, you're shaking again. Um, so you find out, did you, wait, when did you order the shirts then? How did you know? Oh, I ordered the shirts like when we first started talking about having another baby because gotcha. I was like this time, last time you were, you found out with me, like not exciting in the bathroom, found out. And I was like, I want to do one of those cute videos where I surprise my husband and tell hey, him Hey, that- stop moving around. <laughs> so you're moving the microphones, can't hear. Do you want me to pause it? Yes. Um, so um, I ordered like little t- a little t-shirt that said big sister for Adeline and was like, okay, whenever it happens, it happens, but I'm ready. It's from Etsy. I had this cute little shirt. So when um, I was supposed to get my period and I remember you asked me, you're like, aren't you supposed to get your period? And I was like, oh yeah, tomorrow. And then the next day happened and it didn't come. And I was like, huh. I had forgotten by that point. Yeah, you had forgotten. But I was like, huh. So I just like took a pregnancy test, which like I I take like probably once a month, like right before my period because I'm always a little impatient. And um, I took it and I was like, holy shit, that says yes. Like that says pregnant. And you had gone to... Um, the archery range and you were oh, gone yeah. for like about an hour and I'm looking at this test like I could not believe it because we had just talked about how we're like okay with waiting and not starting you know to try for the second Wait, we had when did we have sex though I don't know no because I felt your heart and oh, then wait, wait, I'm not finished with my story oh Jeez, I'm just gonna hang out over here <laughs> you hang out? so I am like looking at the test and I was like holy crap this is crazy um and like I started recording because I was like I want to get my reaction and then when Adeline was napping at the time and I was like when she wakes up I'm putting her in this little shirt and I'm going to tell Alexander well Alexander gets home like about an hour before Adeline and of course he's like "Ooh, we got an hour like before she wakes up and you like come in and I'm trying so hard to like keep my cool but my heart is pounding I want to tell you so badly but like I didn't want to like just tell you I wanted it to be this cute way so I was like trying to hold back and not say anything and you're like asking me how stuff's going and I'm just like yeah it's great (laughs) and then like you come on to me and we end up having sex and he like felt my heart and he's like holy crap your heart is racing and I was like yeah (laughs) you must be really excited yeah I was like I not terrified but like I was trying to keep the secret I was like I don't know how people hold on to this for days or weeks like I could barely hold on to it for an hour before spilling the beans and telling you but um but yeah so um then we put Addie in like a cute little shirt and brought her down and 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 you told me we need to do a video and like she wouldn't want to yeah I was like I need a video of you hugging Adeline like when you come home and he's like well we just took that video I was like well we need another (laughs) and then like of course Adeline was like no and like didn't want to go by dad and I was like you're ruining the video (laughs) But we got it. Yeah. Well, so I am not great at reading cursive. So like Adeline comes up to me and like I see Jessica is pretty emotional. And I'm like looking at the shirt. I'm like, is this for real? Because you had previously made jokes about being pregnant. I think setting this up uh, for months to come because I catch on to things pretty easily. Um, I don't necessarily know. Like I would just you would like touch my stomach and be like, oh, do you feel the baby? Like, I didn't, like, make a pregnancy correct. announcement. Correct, correct. Um, but we got there. I figured it out. I saw, like, some cursive, and it kind of looked like sister and saw you crying. I put the context clues together. What? What is your initial reaction? I'm like, this is fantastic. Like, if I could put it into, like, a perfect time to happen, I don't know of a better time. Like, the only thing I think I would have in place would be maybe her sleeping a little bit better because I know you with sleep is is a much happier person. Um, but other than that, I mean, I can't really ask for too much else to, to get started. Yeah. So we've known for like, what, about a week and a half now? Mm. We found out and like, I think three days later, told my mom and your mom. And so like- what's the difference 
as far as like miscarriages go. Cause like for me, it's not, I know it's very tough for women, but I think it's important for you to let other people know, because from what I've heard is either people in my family or people that I know, I'm not putting them out. They've had miscarriages, at least one. Yeah. Um, and you don't really hear that too often other than like in a tight circle. So, right. So yeah. we found out with Adeline about, like I said, like nine weeks pregnant and we told everybody right away. And I didn't even hesitate because like, I was like nine weeks is pretty far along. And my so, grandma was dying. Yeah. And like, it kind of like all spiraled out. But with this baby, I w- I'm, was four weeks when we found out I'm five weeks now, whenever we told everybody and, um, it was an interesting feeling because like part of me is like, I want to talk about this. Like if something were to happen to this baby and if I were to go through a miscarriage, like I want people to know that like this is a part of life and this is something that happens to other women and you're not alone in it. And like that like tugs at my heartstrings to like share that with like my online community but sharing it in person with people like your mom and my mom and like you know our siblings and things like that was a different type of feeling because it's not like my online community is for the most part a group of moms Mm -hmm. like a group of women either pregnant or you know have multiple kids who probably can relate to the way that I'm feeling Whereas, and then like, which sounds silly saying out loud, cause like, I'm sure my mom and your mom can also relate to the way that I'm feeling mm-hmm. and probably have a ton of experience, but like telling somebody in person, like I'm four weeks pregnant. Like it's almost like there's like this weird shadow over it. Like everybody's like, Oh, you're so early. Like it, it you know, like it didn't feel as celebratory as if I were to announce it and like have a distinct bump right. and like be pregnant like being further along makes me more pregnant than i am right now Mm. you know i don't know so it was like this weird it it was weird like i felt like when we told people i had to preface like i'm still really early along like but we just don't want to keep it a secret like if something were to happen we would want you to mourn that loss with us you know Mm -hmm. like I don't know. And I guess I get that that's not for everybody. Some people want that personal time and some people don't announce until much, much later because they want to have that personal time right. with, you know, whatever it would ever course would happen. But for me, I was like, I plan to share and I plan to, you know, include my community of people with me because I want to, right. I want them to be a part of this. But so personally, I don't know much about like percentages of miscarriages and I've never had a miscarriage myself. So I just know that like from talking to people, I've heard like thrown out there that it's common to have a miscarriage with your second. Um, so like that was like, oh, well, this is my second. Like, uh, like, should I be more worried about it? Um, and then like, I don't know, it's just like this little shadow. And I think that's like something that people probably feel when being pregnant. And I just, I never felt with Adeline. Um, but this one is, this baby has like already started to like, there is that little shadow of like, what if, what Mm. if it's a possibility? What if, what if, and like, I don't know, it's kind of like awesome that I know at four weeks, but I was also, maybe if I would have like not been so in tune with my body and not found out until I was 10 weeks, then I don't, I get kind of get to bypass that like uncertainty that I'm sure every, like, I remember a couple of our friends were pregnant and they were like, you know, I was so nervous that something was going to happen to the baby. And Mm -hmm. like, I'm kind of feeling that I am feeling a little nervous because we're so early on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You've definitely brought it up a lot more than last time because I think last time we were past that that period already. Yeah, we were like by the time people knew we were like 12 weeks, which is Mm -hmm. like when people typically announce. Yeah. um, Because the percentage of like the possibility of miscarriage goes down the further along you get. Um, But yeah, it's been weird. But it's also so exciting. Like both of our parents so far have been really excited about hearing and Mm -hmm. like you know, um, I'm so, so excited to have another baby. I cannot, I have so many friends who just had babies and I've just been like seeing all these little newborns and like, I'm thrilled. And Adeline has picked up her baby doll and like, will not put it down. That was, that was lucky. We got lucky on that one. (laughs) She carries the baby around in her little like infant carrier or toy carrier. Loves it. Absolutely loves having the baby. So 
that's cool. But yeah, I don't know. It's so, it's different this time around. And it's also interesting because I, like I said, didn't experience very many symptoms the first time mm-hmm. until like until I found out I was pregnant. I, I remember we were so happy for like three days and then I got hit with nausea and we were like, well, this sucks. And this time, like I'm only five weeks and I'm already whew, not feeling good. A lot of time going to be spent outside cooking. Yeah. Um. So as far as next steps goes, we don't have to go into depth on this podcast, but you're also looking at different things as far as birth plans go. Do you want to share a hair bit of that? Oh, yeah. We're around 30 minutes. Cool. No, I think that'd be an awesome topic to talk about next time and like see what people are interested in. But um, so like I said, real early on in this pregnancy, but the first, um, there's a few changes that have happened. Like you said before our insurance, your insurance that covered Adeline's birth, 100% no longer is our insurance plan. So we have to take into account money. Um, I'm self-employed and don't, you know, have self-employed insurance, which is not as good as, um, when you work for a company, which stinks. So, um, there's that to consider. And then we've also wanted to consider a home birth. So with Adeline, we worked with a midwifery group, but it was in hospital. And now we're kind of thinking and exploring our options with home birth, um, which we're still in the middle of exploring and like, you know, all of that good stuff. So we'll have to talk more about that when we get a little bit more information and can talk about that on the next episode. Absolutely. Do you want to end with saying one nice thing about each other or We'll do that later at night. <laughs> well, we usually say three things that three? we well, love I mean, I, about each other. Okay. Do you want to say one? We'll say one. We'll share one. Okay. You go first. Uh, I love how even though you're struggling with nausea by sometimes just standing up or the smell of me breathing, um, when <laughs> <laughs> this this is actually working out pretty good right now. Um. I love that when there's music on and Addie's dancing, you'll still go over um, and dance with her and you just seem so happy. Oh, I like how you can remain what, calm. What do you like? I love how, how you can remain calm in like stressful situations. Like we were, you know, on our way to get food and Addie's in the back saying up, 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 up. And like we have a phone call we have to get to you and you're just like chill and like you just bring like so much peace into like mine and Adeline's life and Bali's and it's nice thank you thanks so much for listening to this week's episode head to the show notes to access all of our organizational tools like our household planner and checklists and make sure to follow on Instagram TikTok or YouTube at Jessica Hazeman oh and leave us a rating or review we appreciate your support 